A high school student built a mobile dorm room and he's taking it with him to college. Let's talk about that. Hi, I'm Jeffrey. And I'm Hadassah. We're, We're from, from Ohio. Ohio. Good, Good mythical, mythical morning. morning. Good Mythical Morning. This episode is brought to you by Cthulhu.com, where you can get this. A bear that will hold your toilet paper roll. My toilet paper roll? Yeah. Your toilet paper roll. That, well, well, thanks, Link. You know, when I wipe my butt, I always think to myself, I wish a miniature black bear were staring at me. Pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know it means a lot. All right, thanks for joining us today. You can put that down. Do that on your own time, please. Uh, you have three days, friends. Three days to join Team Mythical Beast and join the Super Note competition. Just make it happen, Captain. Get on there and breathe deep and exhale long. Join Team Mythical Beast for the Super Note competition. You could win the whole thing. Usually there's some late entries and, and someone who's oh, yeah. a contender is like yeah. coming at the very end. That's right. All right, here we go. I, there's a video on YouTube that, really? that we've seen. Yeah, there's at least one on there, and I've seen it. Um, a kid who, well, I'll say a kid, a guy named Austin, a high school student, decided to build his college dorm room in the back of his parents' house. And... Uh, you know, we can roll some footage from the actual video while I tell you about it. But basically, he took a what seemed to be a flatbed trailer, mm -hmm. and then he built what ultimately turned out to look like a pretty nice little cabin. Little, it's like a single wide trailer slash cabin slash dorm room. I mean, he's taking it to college. He's got his little desk in the front. He's got his. Uh, it's kind of like an RV, but it's homemade. He paid twelve thousand dollars. Invested twelve thousand dollars in, and it thing. looks like a house. It, he's it he's got a look couch. Like a trailer. He's got a couch. He's got a loft, and he's got a shower that collects rainwater. And then he's got a latrine. I call it a latrine. I don't call it a bathroom because it's basically just a fancy container for a five-gallon bucket. Yeah. And he he uses the bathroom in the bucket and then puts sawdust on it. He ninja turtles in that thing. <laughs> and then, and then he he. Puts a lid on it and he uses it as compost. Now, I, in most college students I know don't they don't have time for composting, but I do know a lot of college students who, who crap in buckets. But you can you invite people over. I think he probably has a lid for it or something. Yeah, he no he put he puts a lid on it, takes it outside and brings in a new bucket. That's part of his system. No, but when you're done, you need to put a lid over. That's it. what I said, Rhett. He puts a lid you know on. What we gotta do? We gotta send him this. Put it. He can put it in his. Yeah. You, it's a good idea. Well, this is ours. We could send him one. Oh, you like want to, you want to send him to the toilet paper only? No, we could send him another one, courtesy of Catullas. That's coming your way, Austin. That's that's how highly we think of you and and what you've done. But it got me thinking about our dorm room experience. You know, I have very fond memories of our dorm room. It wasn't mobile, just to start that way. It was not. It was and in I a don't, dorm. I don't regret that because we did make the space our own. I think there's something in every man who wants to take a space and then make it submit to him. <laughs> and if, if you're Austin, you build it in your backyard and you make it submit to you. If you're a little kid, you build a hideout. I built a hideout when I was a kid. It had plumbing. Well, it had a pipe coming through the side of it and I would pee in the pipe. Where did the pipe go to? Into the woods. And I, I, I exerted my dominance you, over that hideout. You, did you invite me into this hideout? Yeah, but I, I said, don't drink from that straw. That's my latrine. And then we go to college, and I remember it's the it first had a, time. Like a piece of PVC pipe? It was a black PVC pipe, and it was kind of coming through the side. You don't remember this? And there was like a weight bench. It was that coming I through the side, or it was coming up? I mean, it's got to come up in order to get in there. Yeah, I learned that pretty quickly, yeah. <laughs> that You pee in the high end. Okay. Definitely. What I'm getting at is when we got to college, it was the first time to actually be living on our own. Of course, Rhett and I were roommates at NC State University. 24 of Syme Dorm. That was the bottom floor of Syme Dorm. East Campus. East Campus, we were in there. And I remember walking in there and saying, okay, we can decorate this place, we can, we can move everything around the way we want it. This is our space to exert dominance over. I don't, you, I don't remember thinking of it like that. 
I wasn't trying to exert dominance over it. I was just like, all right, let's figure out where we're gonna put this stuff, man. Now we have some pictures. College. We, we wanna show you. Uh, <laughs> I, we stayed in that dorm room two, two years, I, so I think this is sophomore year. Uh, here's the picture of us standing in front of our dorm room. Now I will say right off the bat, I am the one on the left with my shirt off. Yes, I have my shirt off. That's the first thing that you people are gonna comment on. And then the second thing you're gonna comment on is how emaciated Rhett looks. He looks so unhealthy. I was, no, I was actually very healthy. Your, your clothes were just five sizes too I was big. a lot skinnier than I am now, and I wore much bigger clothes because that was back when those pants were in style, at least in some groups they were in style. And um, we, I, I gotta be honest with you, we looked like a couple of punks. I wouldn't have trusted us with anything, much less the decorative aspect of a dorm room. Right. Now, this is the front door of our dorm room, and everyone in our hall had a whiteboard where people could put messages. I think ours says, Link, your mom called. And then you you ha you posted a poster that says, James is happy. That's James Brown. You thought that was funny. And you have anything else to say about this before we go inside? Why does it say happy? Why does our room say happy? I don't know. I think it might have said happy birthday, and we took birthday off. Crazy. Let's talk about the interior of the dorm room because it was simple. Um, you know, everybody had to make a decision. When you got into a dorm room that was on campus, and I, I guess this is how it still works on a college campus, they basically have some pieces of furniture that are just part of the room. So you each had your chest of drawers, chester drawers as you call them. Mm -hmm. Still do. Um, you had a bunk bed that could be taken apart and so if you, if you didn't really like your roommate or you wanted to divide the room, you could take the beds apart and be on different sides. But it was just, it was a foregone conclusion. We were bunking. We were gonna be bunk buddies. <laughs> <laughs> and were you the, you, you were the top bunk. No, I was the top bunk. I was the bottom bunk, man. I yeah. can't, big man like me can't fall off of that thing. I'd break every bone in my body. And we had Pulp Fiction poster and a poster of Richard Nixon shaking hands with Elvis. Iconic kind of stuff. Here. And it looks like in this photo, I, I had just given blood, or actually I had just given plasma, because that's how I made money in college. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Um, so yeah, and you know, we went back. This is a special place in our lives, so much to the point that years later, I'd say this, this might have been six years after we graduated, we found ourselves back on the campus of NC State, and we went back to our dorm room, knocked on the door, and two, the, the, Two guys who were roommates answered the door, and we were like, "Hey, we used to live here. Can we come in?" And they were like, they were, uh, and "You could tell. They could look on their face, and you could tell this has not happened before." No. Who Who are these dudes? And we like came in there, and we kind of like we went in, stood in the middle of the room, and kind of looked around, like it's different. You guys, you did some good stuff. I like it. what you've done here, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're not bucking, huh? You must have two good friends. <laughs> <laughs> and we had, remember on the inside of the closet, we had written a message. Yeah. It was kind of like a time capsule. Yep. We were written a message, Rhett and Link's dorm room, uh, 1996 through 1998. This place will never be the same type thing. It was yeah, like it was way, a, it was very dramatic. And they painted over it. Somebody painted over it. It was gone. Yeah. We went in there and we asked the guys, we were like, did you paint the inside of your, and they're like, no, no, no. I, and I was pretty, I was pretty disappointed. And I'd say one of the the best aspects of this dorm room, and you can go to this place on NC State's campus, first floor of Syme Dorm, and see this is that the window opened up underneath the stairs to the front of the building because we're actually in the basement technically because it was higher on one side. So mm -hmm. there was no sunlight that got into our room. But what we had done is we would open that window up and we had got camping chairs and we put them out there and we would sit under the stairs and just hang out with friends, the two of us and other people from, from the dorm and across campus. So when we went back to meet these guys, we were like, so you guys look like hanging out up under the stairs? And they were like, no. What? You, The window opens? They, they, they had never thought that they should go under the stairs. Well, it's pretty- To pretty, hang out. Pretty dirty and nasty under there. But it's awesome. But it was also, it's also like being a bat. I mean, there was zero sunlight that came in. So I remember it would be the middle of the day and we could be sleeping. It was a perfect scenario for college you could sleep, but I think I started to become like a like a bat. Like in order to see my way around the dorm room, I would emit sonar. Did I tell you this? I don't recall this. Boop, boop, beep, beep, beep. It would come back at me and I would know how far like you were away or I'm not even if you this. were sleeping. I, or... I think you're making this up. 
It was dark in there. And then you went back. I went back years later. This is just a few years ago. I went back with my son, Locke, and we walked around campus. And it's like, son, we're going to go to the dorm room that I used to live in. And we're going to say hey to the people who live in there. That's how I talk to my son. Because I want him to grow up and be a man. So I said, let's go in there. We're not even going to ask permission. So we went in there, knocked on the door. No answer. And then I start looking. I'm like, this door, the door looks different than everything. It's no longer a dorm room. It's like a storage facility. They have deemed the room unfit for habitation because of something to do with this lack of sunlight. They think the kids aren't getting enough vitamin, vitamin D. Vitamin D deficient. And they're room, all going to yeah. be depressed. Someone like, may have died. Well, this is the, it's the best room on NC State's campus, and it's no longer a dorm room unless they've reversed the policy. It's a sad day. Maybe we can go back there and be squatters. Really? Yeah. I, this time I get the top bone. All right. That puts a button on it. <laughs> uh, leave a comment and let us know what you aspire to do or did with your dorm room. Here we go. Ooh, Link knows something Rhett doesn't. Well, how do I narrow it down? Rhett. Huh? I know something you don't. <laughs> okay, what is it? Something. Something you don't. If I told you, you'd know it. What does it pertain to? Secret knowledge. Secret knowledge of what? See, you're trying to get it out of me. You're trying to get the leg up. You can't handle it, can you? Me knowing something you don't. Are you emitting sonar right now? How'd you guess? Dang it. Now I know nothing you don't. <laughs>